Hi, this is Jim Gibson in San Diego. We're looking at an install. Oh, we did a demo that tore out a lot of the walls, things like that. And now we're going to be doing pre-cable. So please stay tuned. You get some uh, basic cabling uh, done here and uh, at least the first phase, it's called uh, pre-cable. Hi, this is Jim in San Diego and we're doing a pull. And so uh, there's some uh, cables that are being pulled here and you always pull from a central location. So there's 12 boxes there and what we are doing is they're pulling and the cables going up into the ceiling and then of course it's going out. So it's always, you should always have multiple boxes if you're doing multiple pulls. And this is, this room is a demo, demolition. So it was another company that was in here, another tenant that was in here. And this tenant uh, decided to leave or the lease was up and this new company decided to take over uh, for this uh, company. And so what you have here is you, uh, you know, they tore down some of the walls. You can see the walls. This is probably an old firewall, I can I think might be a sound proofing wall I don't know you know cut down on the sound but the cable uh, comes out and you can see it's being pulled here some of it and uh, those little things are called j-hooks there's different styles there are, there are plastic style there there's metal styles you can get the uh, the one style that I have on on the website at cablesupply.com we sell this stuff and there is a stub out now stub out is just a conduit, a four inch conduit with a bushing at the end so that you can pull cable through walls fairly easy. So what we're doing here is we're pulling some cable. The technician is pulling cable through. And what he's done is that's a service loop. So he's gonna pull the loop down because he has a 90 degree turn here. So that service loop as he pulls it down it just makes it easy for him to, uh, to feed it through the cable at the 90 degree turn. So you can see that it's a 90 degree turn there, he's in the corner. Yeah, let me interrupt right now and talk to you about what's going on. Now you see they're doing a 90 degree turn here. Well, the reason they're doing a 90 degree turn here manually by pulling in a service loop, you see the service loop going down to the ground and coming back? It's because they don't have a tool with them that they should have with them. And that's called a cable pulley. And it's a little pulley that attaches really easy, by the way, to attach to somewhere above you, uh, either using a stringer or a piece of structure there. And it does wonderful 90 degree turns. Now, the nice thing about having this pulley is you can do this with one person. So you don't have to have two people uh, doing a service loop and, and doing all those other things. And in fact, sometimes you get to start out with a pull string all the way from where the boxes are all the way through to your destination. Then you attach all your cables to it and you pull it through. And most of the time, it only takes one person to do this type of pulley. So these pulleys pay for themselves in a very short time period. We sell them on our website. They are fantastic. I use them all the time. They're a great product heavy duty made specifically for cable. The cable isn't going to get caught on the axle of the pulley, things like that. They're specifically designed. They're heavy duty plastic, heavy duty aluminum. Uh, so let's get back to the video and thank you for watching. So now what's happening is the technician here is going to wind it up and is, is going to leave it here because, um, because the uh, because the cubicles aren't installed yet. And so you want to put it up in a protected area. You can see the other service, they're not actually service loops, but it's always good to have service loops to have a little extra cable up in the ceiling. Uh, but in this case, they're not service loops. They just don't have the, um, uh, obviously this is a construction site. We don't have the, uh, the cubicles installed yet. So you got to get the cubicles installed and then these, and then what's going to happen is they will turn around and uh, and uh, they will turn around and uh, feed the cable through the cubicle. So there's usually at least two phases to a cabling uh, job, and that's uh, first one is to pull the cable, and the second one is to set finish. 
And um, at this point, what you want to do is get that cable up. And especially it's easier if you don't have the uh, ceiling up yet. You can do it after the ceiling's up, but it's easier when it, the ceiling's not up. Um, and that's, that's pull cable. So you're going to pull cable everywhere. And this is probably going to be a two-phase pull cable because they got to pull it to the area and then they got to wait for the cubes to come in. And then once the cubes come in, then they turn around and, and finish the uh, pre-cable. So the nice thing about this too is we are using pull string. And uh, you can see this little green, little green uh, string in there. You can see it there. Now that green string um, helps them to pull the cable. So it goes all the way back to the room where the cable boxes are and they attach cable to that pull string and then the person down here can uh, turn around and and pull the uh, uh, the pull string and then uh, pull the cable to that location again you got to have a service loop when you have a 90 degree like that you can't just uh, pull around a 90 degree it just it really is a pain so you always do a little loop there Now the other thing I want to point out to you is the ceiling. The ceiling, all these walls are cut. So in the past, maybe they were firewalls. They're not anymore. Once they're cut like this, they're no longer a firewall. So you have no code requirements uh, in that. Uh, so you just pull through it. You don't worry about it. You don't have to put a fire a stop or anything else in them. Um, but let's take a look at the HVAC. And, uh, if you see everywhere, there's two, two uh, ducts coming down. Now, if one is an intake and one is an exhaust from the HVAC, then it's a non-plenum rated ceiling and you don't need to use plenum cable in a non-plenum rated ceiling. What you use is you use um, um, uh, non-plenum rated cable. And I'm getting distracted here, sorry. Um, and so the difference in price is significant. Uh, plenum rated cable is about twice as expensive as non-plenum cable. Um, you have to know your jurisdiction. There are some jurisdictions that require plenum rated cable um, in every install. Now a plenum rated cable would mean that the ceiling is the return. So they have one feed duct feeding the heater and the air conditioner down to the, the living area and then they use the whole ceiling as a return duct. But if you have a return duct and a feed duct, then it's a non-plenum rated ceiling. So you need to uh, know what type of ceiling you have before you buy the cable or else you're buying the wrong cable and you can't, you can't put it up there uh, because it's uh, non-plenum and, and you can't put a non-plenum cable in a plenum ceiling. Now you can put a plenum cable in a non-plenum ceiling, that's fine. Uh, but that's beyond the code, it's not required. Again, your jurisdiction might be different. So you have to uh, figure out what is gonna work for your jurisdiction. Now this is a demo, so there's gonna be a lot of old, old sloppy wire from years past. And you're gonna see it right here. Because you're gonna see this wire right here and that wire right there has, uh, has been spliced together using uh, beans, or jelly beans, beanies. And it's used for splicing wire. You can't do that with computer cable. Of course, in this case, it's just going to run a telephone. So you've got a telephone here. The cable runs to the telephone. There are some of the old jacks that are there. And usually that red wire like that, that's some sort of control wire. It might be fire alarm, it might be HVAC. But it's not... Um, uh, computer wire. So uh, this is basically the installation. This is how it looks. It's actually a very nice clean installation. It's going very well. Again, they're still in the first phase, first part of the first phase, but they're still in that phase. Oh, you can see the cable. Now you're working with other trades. There needs to be some negotiation to stay out of their way, for them to stay out of your way, things like that. That's pretty normal in this type of construction. Right here what you have is you have uh, uh, stub outs. Now stub outs, usually the electrician puts in the stub outs, but it's this regular conduit that goes all the way down the wall to an outlet. And 
When you have it up there like that, it's a 90 degree bend above the ceiling. Can you see the ceiling, the ceiling reel go, rail going in there? It's a 90 degree bend above the ceiling, so that's why it's called a stub out, and it's usually above the ceiling. Now these is, this is nice because they have bushings on the end. Normally there's, there's no bushings on the end. It's just a piece of conduit coming out, and you really don't need bushings for low voltage. I don't know why they put them in there, but that's extra. Um, and this is turning into a very nice job with the uh, with the J hooks and all and everything else getting them up ahead of time. Now the J hooks are attached to stringers. Let me show you one. I'm walking back. See if I can find the stringer here. So the J hooks are attached to that metal metal wire coming down the wall. You see it? And the metal wire is attached to the sub ceiling or sub floor from above. And uh, they're, they're called stringers, and usually you can get your, uh, your ceiling guys to put them in, or you have to put them in yourself, and it takes a uh, device to put them in. It's no big deal. Um, but if you look up there, there's also hooks that someone put in a long time ago. You can attach your stringers to them. And sometimes you can attach your stringers uh, to the ceiling supports, but they're, they're normally used for ceiling supports, and of course they, they are used for J-hooks, to so hold J-hooks up. Um, and you can see them right there, how they're using them. So it holds the cable up, keeps the cable off the ceiling. This amount of cable hanging on the ceiling after a little bit of time is going to show bulging on the ceiling. If you're running one or two cables and the ceiling's already up, it's no big deal. You don't need J-hooks. But generally speaking, when you're, when you're putting in new cable, uh, you want to put J-hooks up there. So that's your... Uh, it's a nice installation. They're doing a great job. It's a great company. If you're in Southern California, you need to hire them if you need cabling. Uh, tell data. Okay, so I've given you a quick review of everything. Now, this is some cable that's been up there for years. It's not tell data. This is from the old suite. That's a 25 pair of cables. It's a lot thicker. Usually, it's this color, this. Uh, Phone company greenish gray color, and it has 25 pairs of cable. When you deal with um, uh, voice and data networks, you don't deal with individual wires. You're dealing with pairs. It's never pair, you know individual wires. Now this one is really thick, and that's probably a 50 pair cable or something else that I'm unaware of. Uh, but rarely we ever see that anywhere. And in fact, you're hardly going to see 25 pair anymore because everything has gone to voice over IP. And of course, voice over IP is really just, uh, you know, computer language, um, binary language, uh, and uh, the phone is now a computer. This is really sloppy up here, as you could see, from years of abuse and no one doing the job right or clean. And it, it takes extra effort to do it right. And sometimes people are in a hurry and they go sometimes with the lowest bid and then they end up with junk like that. Well, not that all lowest bids are junk, by the way, but that's what happens. So if you got a good cabling company or if you're planning to do cabling, then make sure you do it right. I'm trying to think if there's anything else here. Don't see anything else. Again, this is Jim Gibson with CableSupply.com. Uh, thank you for listening to this video today. I do appreciate it. If you like it, give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe. Again, Jim Gibson, Cable Supply. Thank you for watching this video. I do appreciate it. Uh, thumbs up. Subscribe. Have a great day. Bye.